this point, we, we want to practice uh, Laplace transform on two special functions. One heavy side, we did a little practicing. Another uh, delta function. Delta function, all right. Look at this delta function example. Hammer blow response of a mass spring system. First, we have a mass spring system, typical mass spring system, but driving force if the driving force is a special hammer blow, so we use delta function to model it. Delta function model that driving force. All right, so let's solve this partial, uh, this uh, ODE, yeah. IVP problem. Okay, yeah. We just apply Laplace transform, okay? Yeah, but for the left hand side, it's easy. Yeah. Left hand side we did before, okay? With the initial values because all zero, remember we use that formula, yeah. So I didn't copy that formula, okay? Yeah, yeah we will see that. But right hand side, delta function here. Delta function A equals one. We apply this formula, Laplace transform of the delta function a equals 1 e to the negative s. Simple e function. Yeah. So then we just solve algebraic equation. Yeah, here, very simple. Capital Y, we can write its formula quickly. Yeah. Next, inverse Laplace transform. Yeah. But when we do inverse Laplace transform, yeah, remember. The numerator, if it's an e term, e to some variable expression, yeah, typically it should be the linear. Yeah. Yeah, otherwise, it's hard to handle. All right? So here, linear, yeah, because the equation, our, we have two shifting theorems. So we require the exponent, not too complicated. Yeah. Linear, then we can handle. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So then let's split the fraction. Yeah. So the Lapl inverse Laplace transform, yeah, here. Uh, when we take e, yeah, because then you multiply e to each fraction. And so you will see, because the inverse Laplace transform for each fraction by some formula, we can find it easily. After we find inverse Laplace transform, you know, yeah, so here f, we can find a little f. So after we have little f heavy side function, we can find inverse Laplace transform here. All right, yeah, so let's get here. Yeah, yeah, another base formula because 1 over s, we use this formula. It's 1, okay? It's one. Then shift. We need a shift formula. This shift formula. Okay. S minus a inverse Laplace minus a corresponds to s plus one. So a is minus one. Yeah. Minus minus a. Uh, uh, you know one. Yeah. All right. So minus one. A minus one. Okay. All right. So then now we take inverse Laplace transform. All right, so one over s plus one from here, e to the negative t, it's one, right? Little f is one here, one. All right, yeah, so here, inverse Laplace transform, one over s, it's one, okay? Here, I do step by step in order to help you follow, yeah, follow easily. First step, Apply this formula. That's easy. Okay. Second step: shift by a. S minus a. S minus a. A negative one. So we apply multiply. Multiply e to the negative t times one. So it's this, this expression. Okay. Last one: we need to multiply e to the negative s. 
here. So we need this formula, right? e to the negative s. a equals 1. So we should get this expression. OK? Yeah? All right. Yeah, so, th yeah. so we next step. Similarly, the second inverse Laplace transform, we write this one, this way. OK? Just change 2, yeah. minus 2t. Yeah. Then the last step, heavy sign. Oh, someone. The last step. Last step. So we have this. We need to use this formula. Little ft, uh, little f. This is little f. Okay. Minus a. What is a? A is one, right? Here, a is one. A is one. A is two. Oh, sorry. Oh, this should be two. Yeah. Oh, oh. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. So, uh, S. Yeah. Yeah. Not two. One. All right. So, a is one. Yeah, and the U, so it's this one, okay? So F shift T minus A, then U T minus A. Yeah. So the first inverse Laplace transform term. Second, because here it's two, this two comes from this two, okay? This two comes from the denominator too. All right, yeah. So then let's write the inverse Laplace transform. Add that e to the negative s. All right. So use all right this function little f function minus a a is one minus a a is one. Okay, a is one. Yeah. All right. Let's combine. Yeah. Combine these two terms. Yeah. So little y equals this function. Yeah. Although we can write as piecewise yeah, in a textbook, so after this step, write a piecewise definition. Yeah. But here I do not. Re so if you if we get this thought, this step, so we treat we find a solution. Yeah. Because u function has specific definition, we know it. Yeah, so uh, you know, although we can write one more step, you know, to make ordinary people see better, yeah, but for us, uh, it's enough. Okay, for for us, it's enough. For outside people, so you may need to write one more step, one more step. Okay, yeah, because here, uh, one more step, you just write. Yeah, here it's relatively easy. Yeah. Let me use the color. Yeah. Yeah. F for because you only look at the two pieces, one less, uh, uh, yeah, one interval less than one, less than one, it's a zero. For t less than or equal to one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Equal. Yeah, although you can write less than. Yeah, t greater or equal to one. So that's e to the t minus one minus e to the negative two t minus one. Okay. Yeah. So one more step. Yeah. But for us, uh, this step good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Because outside people, they may not know what's the meaning of your U, right? Yeah. For us, we have the definition. For outside people, if they do not know the meaning of U, so we need to write this explicitly. OK? Yeah. All right. So that's the solution. Second one, full terminal RLC network. Yeah. Look at this. This means full terminal. Okay, two terminal for one, uh, you know, velocity, uh, uh, you know, voltage, voltage, yeah, voltage function. First voltage function, but we need to calculate the second voltage function. Okay, for the first two, that's the input. This is output. Okay, 
So here, the experiment. So w first, we set up this electric circuit like this. Yeah. Then, in the first two terminals, we apply input as an impulse function, yeah. delta impulse function, yeah. electric impulse function. Yeah. Apply it. Then, we want to measure the output, the voltage function, and the output two terminals. So that's the original question. Okay? Find the output voltage response in the figure if R equals that number, L and C inputs delta unit impulse at time t0, the current charge R0 at time t. Yeah. So let's solve this problem uh, by Laplace transform. First, let's set up equations. Yeah. All right. The first circuit, yeah. L I, little i prime, yeah. R times I, yeah. Q Q over C equals delta. Yeah. Kirchhoff voltage law. Yeah. Second, yeah, yeah. Oh, the Second, yeah, because this circuit, you only have C and output V. Yeah, very simple. So the second equation, the output V equals little q over C. Yeah. That simple. Yeah. So actually, if we can solve Q from the first equation, then we plug in, we can get the output in the second equation. Yeah. All right. So let's solve the Q function from the first equation. Yeah, because our target is Q function. Our target is not I. Right? Usually, most of the time, our target is little i function. So we take derivative both sides. But here, our target is Q function. So we don't take derivative. Right? Yeah. Because so here we treat little i, little i as the derivative of q function. I prime, that's the double q double prime. Okay. I prime, I prime q double prime. Yeah. So we get an equation for q unknown q function. Yeah. Plugging the given data, so we have this equation. Then we apply Laplace transform. Yeah. Now you, you can see comparing with our old method. Yeah. So this one, much faster. Yeah. So we need to use this formula. Okay. Yeah. Right hand side, we use this formula. Yeah. All right. Delta A0, right? Here. Delta, yeah, because delta A equals 0. So A equals 0, it's 1. Right hand side, Laplace transform, just one. Okay, yeah, yeah, but we need to use these two formulas. Okay, yeah, all right. Yeah, because the initial value of zero, yeah, so we can see initial value, current charge zero, current zero, that means Q of zero is zero. Oh, uh, sorry, charge zero. Charge zero, Q, Q function at zero is zero. Current, current, that's the Q prime. Q prime at zero also zero. Okay? Yeah. So we can use the simplified version of these two formula. Yeah. S square times Q, capital Q, Laplace transform, capital Q. S times Q, 20, yeah, 10,000. So I see we get a simple algebraic equation like that, this one, and Q equals that. After we get the Q in this expression, we find appropriate basic formula. Sine cosine, right? Yeah. After some experience, we know this should be the sine function. Yeah. Because constant here. If S here, it's cosine function. But a constant here, so sine function. Yeah. We need to copy the sine function formula here. Okay, all right. 
First, let's ignore the shift part, plus 10, shift, ignore it. Omega, root of this number, right? Omega, root of that number. So we can write inverse Laplace transform. Yeah, yeah shift, yeah, this shift, we use this formula to get it. That shift, okay? Yeah, yeah. Capital F, this is capital F. Plus 10, minus negative 10, right? Minus negative 10. So e to the negative 10t times little ft. Yeah. All right. So let's write inverse Laplace transform. First, let's apply this formula. But the lambda is 1. Yeah. Lambda, we can multiply constant. Yeah. So sine of lambda t over lambda. Yeah. We do division both sides, so we can make the numerator 1 here, division by lambda, uh, omega. Division by omega, not lambda, okay? Yeah. All right, but omega root of 9900. Yeah. Root of 9900, we can simplify in this way, okay? Yeah. 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 All right. Here, if you keep root as this way, uh, it's fine, okay? I do not require you to convert it to yeah, here, you know, yeah. Uh, all right. Then, Q, yeah, because Q, you need to factor in that minus A. So you need to multiply E to the negative 10T. That's for Q, little Q. Okay? Yeah. This, this formula. Yeah? Q, little Q. All right. After you get a little Q, Little v, little v, one more step. Division by capital C, one more step, you get a little v. Yeah. Yeah. That, that one, yeah. Yeah, after a little simplification, that v function. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, from these a few simple examples, you get idea how to apply Laplace transform, yeah. Yeah. especially for the special function, delta and uh, heavy side functions. Our old way is hard. Yeah. Old way, we don't know how to solve. Okay? Yeah. The transform method, here you can see the power of the transform method. Yeah. Sometimes, if the question so here this is the question in the original original is the time domain yeah this we call a time domain right your variable is time time domain yeah if a problem is relatively hard to solve at the time domain then you know, after this chapter you get an idea can we convert it to a different domain different domain, yeah, so here. We convert to, by Laplace transform, we convert it to S domain, S domain, yeah. Here, although we, have, we do not have a name for, for S, what's the S, right? What's the, you know, terminology? Yeah. Because here we cannot call frequency, right? In signal processing, yeah, we apply Fourier transform, we convert functions from time domain to frequency domain. That's signal processing. But here, Laplace transform, it's not signal processing. Just some special transform. Yeah. But you, your understanding, we change to a different domain, yeah. S domain, yeah. Yeah. some domain. Okay. Yeah. Then we can solve it in a relatively simple way. Then we get back to the time domain. Yeah. Inverse Laplace transform, so we get back to the time domain solution. Yeah. So that's the main idea. Yeah. All right, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we finish uh, part C, yeah, this uh, part C, yeah. Okay, yeah. Now, uh, part C, part D, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, part D, yeah. All right, so the last part, part E. Part E, some 
still we have some interesting topics, yeah. some powerful tools we can learn in this part A. Yeah. So I think after these five parts, A, B, C, D, E, we should have very solid knowledge on Laplace transform. Yeah. Because, you know, several powerful tools we can use. Yeah. All right. So here, E point, yeah, the title first, ODEs with variable coefficients and the systems of ODEs. Yeah, yeah. Actually, before that, before the topics, yeah, these two are application topics. Before that, we do the Laplace transform for differentiation and integral integration. We did something on uh, differentiation and integration before, yeah, but here, we do from different domain, yeah. So that the the previous round we do on time domain, for example. Here we do on s domain, differentiation and uh, integration. So the formulas are different. Yeah. Also, very useful formulas. Yeah. All right. Okay. E point one, convolution and integral equations. Convolution, yeah, the first important the keyword, convolution. Yeah. Have you heard of convolution a little bit? Somewhere, convolution, yeah. In signal processing, uh, people use convolution a lot. Because when, when you apply digital filters on your signals, you how do you apply digital signals? Convolution. So we have a special operation we can define by the convolution. But that's digital convolution. Here, we do not use digital convolution. We use continuous, continuous convolution. Yeah. Original meaning of convolution. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's, first, let's look at the definition of convolution. What's the convolution? Convolution operation. First, let's do a simple observation from our current uh, simple formula. This everybody is familiar with this simple formula, right? Linearity property of Laplace transform. Okay, all right. But here, let me take this view, special view, yeah, to understand this formula. The function whose Laplace transform. Yeah, so here. All right. First, first let me hide hide this function. Although you know this function, okay. First, I put a question mark here, okay. Yeah. So we don't look at that function. Laplace transform of something, okay, so of some function equals uh, the function question mark we represent unknown function, okay, whose Laplace transform. Laplace of this question mark equals the sum of Laplace trans sum of Laplace transforms of two functions f and g functions. Okay, is yeah, the question mark function is the sum of these two functions. Okay, yeah, yeah. It looks it, it look, so here. I use this view. It looks like. Unnecessary, right? Yeah, I mean, why you do it in this way? It looks like unnecessary. But here, one thing it's very common researchers do in, yeah, so imagine you are a researcher yeah, because you want to discover some new properties, new laws, some new uh, phenomena, for example. Yeah, you want to do that. All right. So researchers usually. They start from the existing knowledge, okay? Existing formulas, existing rules. Yeah. So they try to change a little bit, yeah, change here and there, and want to see can we get something new? Yeah. That's typically researchers do. Yeah. Here, let's use that way to change. Yeah. Can we change? This formula is correct. Can we change slightly to make a different one? And we try to see, can we get something new? Yeah. 
it's a you know by a typical researcher uh, thinking here. New question. Laplace transform of a new function question mark. We don't know. Okay, we don't know. All right, but the result we know it's a product of the Laplace transform of two functions. Oh, see, we follow that pattern, but we change from sum to product. Can we get something new? Yeah. So the researchers, they frequently they try to discover some new things in this way. Okay. All right. So first question, because you want to guess, right? Is it f product of original two function f and g? Yeah. Because that one, the product of a sum of original two functions. Yeah. By analogy, yeah. Because usually. For many people, when they do some logical reasoning, they apply an analogy frequently. Yeah. Here, if you apply analogy, the first guess is f times g. No. Yeah. But the answer is no. no. It's wrong. No. If you do it in that way, by analogy, it's wrong. No. Why? Because we can see from, yeah, we can see. You will see later. We will see. You know. You can put some example. You will see it's it's wrong. Okay. Yeah. Convolution of yeah here actually, the answer. Here I tell you the answer. The answer is convolution of f and g. That's question mark should be convolution operation of f and g. Now you know the importance of convolution. That question mark should be the convolution. So let's look at the definition of convolution. Okay, we use this notation, convolution notation. That star. Okay, the special, not multiplication. Yeah, when you see this, do not treat it as a multiplication. Okay, yeah. All right, it's a special operation. We use this integral to define. Okay, this integral in this way, integral from zero to t. Then inside integral function f of tau tau dummy variable, okay, f of tau times g of t minus tau. This kind of convolution, okay. Yeah. So this is the original definition of the convolution. Yeah. In signal processing, that digital version of convolution derived from this original definition. In signal processing, you will also learn convolution, but that's digital convolution. Here, the, it's, it's the continuous convolution. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So now, if you do this operation, then this h function is the answer of the question mark. H. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's the convolution theorem. Yeah. So that result. Gives us this convolution theorem, important theorem. Okay, if two function f and g satisfy assumption in existence of theorem, yeah, because we assume their Laplace transform exists. Yeah, so under certain condition. Okay, yeah, yeah, so that their transforms f capital f and g exist. Yeah, the product capital H. Equals capital F times capital G, capital H Laplace transform of this little h, capital H this little h Laplace transform okay of this convolution, equals F times G is the transform of little h given by this formula. That's the convolution theorem. Okay, yeah, yeah, so. Later, so you can apply、uh, this theorem if you have product of two Laplace transform functions. Yeah, each one you know, little f original little f function you know it, little g original little g function you also know it. How to find little h function in that question mark? You take this integral. You calculate this integral. You find that little h. By this convolution theorem, okay, yeah, all right, yeah. 
So let's try to practice a little bit to get us familiar with convolution. First, capital H equals this one, this function. Yeah. Although we can use other way to find a little h, right? Yeah. When you see this function, do you have an idea how to find inverse transform, Laplace transform? When you see that ex expression, the fraction, 1 over product of s minus a times s, do you have an idea how to, how to find inverse transform? Based on your experience, yeah, we have done many examples. We split the fraction, right? Yeah, we split one fraction minus another one. Okay, one over s minus a minus one over s. But we need to adjust, you know, uh, numerator. Yeah. So our old old method. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Our goal we find a little h. Old way here, yeah. Let me recall the old way. Yeah, I I did it. I, I do it here. <coughs> Split. Right. Still not quite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get used to it. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Because when you see the structure like that, split. Yeah. First reaction, just split it in this way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because common denominator you have a, a, and this a cancel out. Yeah. Yeah. Try to get used to it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then little h inverse Laplace transform, like that. Okay. Yeah. Then the basic formula, the shift one over s. Yeah. One over s. Basic formula. That's one. Okay. That one we need a shift formula. This shift formula, okay, yeah, e, all right, so you get 1 over a times parenthesis e to the a t minus 1. That's the old way, okay, yeah. Split the fraction, then apply these two basic formulas, yeah, okay, yeah. New way, now new way, yeah, new way. We do not mean the new way is better, it's just a different solution, okay? Look at the structure, product of two functions, right? Can we use the convolution, convolution theorem, product, little f, oh, capital F times capital G. Here we have capital F times capital G. Do we have little f, little g? No. After we have little f, little g, can we use convolution to find a little h? Yeah. So that's our new way. We do not say the new way is better than old way, yeah. but new way give us completely different view of the same problem. Yeah. New way, this time we split as two product of two fractions. Yeah. Capital F, capital G. Can we find little f, little g inverse by inverse Laplace transform? Okay. Capital S equals this function, capital G equals that function. Yeah. So capital, we apply this formula. So, yeah, yeah. capital H equals that. Yeah. Yeah. Little f by the shift theorem, okay? This, this shift formula, shifting formula, yeah. So we get little f, this function. Little g, just one. Yeah, this function, okay? So the next question is, to find little h, little h, we do convolution on these two functions. Convolution, definition, apply on these two functions, okay? All right, little h by convolution theorem. Here, why we can do that? By convolution theorem. Little h equals little f, convolute little g in this integral. Yeah. All right. So the first one, e to the a tall. Okay. Second one, g, but g is a constant. Yeah. g is 1. Yeah. Let's calculate this integral the same. Yeah? Yeah. Same. <laughs> so you can see, yeah. yeah. When we have a different way to solve, yeah. because we have one 
more tool or method to solve the same problem if, yeah, so in the real world situation. Because for some problem, the old way probably hard to solve. And we, we can try the new way, this way. Yeah, probably this new way, much easier to solve. We, we may have those situations. All right. Okay. Yeah. So that's the. Uh, yeah. Another example. Yeah. Here, this little space here. I do not do the computation. I just show you how to calculate inverse Laplace transform here. Okay. Yeah. Because if you calculate directly, a little hard, right? Look at the square here. The new denominator. There is a square. If I ask you to calculate directly, you may feel very hard. Well, yeah. but that square, can you understand that square as a product of two functions? Yeah. Square, product of same function. Same function, f times f. So the inverse transform, can you do convolution f with itself? Yeah. <coughs> You can do convolution S with itself. Yeah. Little f, we can use the, our basic formula number eight. Okay, number eight. Yeah, omega. Okay. Yeah. So omega over omega. Yeah. Omega uh, sine omega t over omega. Yeah. All right. So little f is sine omega t over omega. Okay. Same function inverse Laplace transform convolution of between these you know, the same function. Two copies of same function. Yeah? You need to calculate integral. Yeah. yeah. It takes some time. Yeah. But here I do not need to show you. Yeah. Yeah. You can calculate to get the answer. Yeah. See? Yeah. So here you can see yeah. after these are few examples you can see Convolution operation is a powerful tool in problem solving. Yeah. Powerful tool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we will see more examples yeah. about convolution. Yeah. All right. More understanding on convolution. Yeah. Let, let us finish this slide. Then we have a break. Yeah. Basic properties. First. Commutative law. Yeah. F convolute G equals G convolute F. Yeah. So we call it commutative law. Yeah. You just switch two functions. When you do convolutions, the order doesn't matter. Okay? You can change the order. Yeah. Commutative law, the first property. Second property, distributive law. F convolute sum of G1 and G2, you can do convolution F with each little g, then you take a sum after the convolutions. Yeah. So distributive law. Yeah. Yeah, very simple. Okay? All right. Then associative law. With respect to convolution, we have associative law. We can associate. Yeah. In you know this way, associative law, all right? Yeah, basic laws. Yeah, and any function convolute with zero also zero. Uh, by definition, you can see g function is zero, so the whole function equals zero. Yeah, so very simple properties. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but something. So if you make your extension too much, you may get something wrong. Okay? Yeah. So here I show you one example. Unusual properties of convolution. Unusual. So what's that? F convolute with one does not equal to F. Okay? It's different from product. Product. Yeah. So because some people may treat convolution as product, right? The product. Yeah. Or some people confused with, you know, similar to product. Yeah. 
Here, not multiplication. It's different from regular multiplication. Okay? Yeah. So different from f. Yeah. To see that, we just look at from the definition. Convolute with one. G is one, this function. How can you say this function equals the original function? Because the derivative of this function equals original function. How can you say if you do not take derivative, it still equals original function? No. In general, it's not. Okay? In general, it's not. Yeah. All right. So, so yeah, be careful. Yeah. Something you cannot apply, okay? Based on the some analogy. Yeah. People tend to use analogy to do logic reasoning. Yeah. That could be wrong. Yeah. Here it's a special example. <coughs> Another thing, f convolute with itself may not be non-negative. Yeah. Because if you use product to understand, because the product f squared, non-negative, right? f times f itself, non-negative. But here, f convolute itself, not necessarily a negative function. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because you can think about this function convolute with itself. Yeah. You can calculate. Okay? Yeah. After calculation, you get this function. Okay? This one. Can you imagine when t is negative? t could be negative, right? t negative. Then this big parenthesis is positive. Positive number times negative t, it's negative. Okay? So the convolution of the same function could be a negative function. Yeah. All right? Yeah? So, so here, you know, convolution is a special operation. Yeah, very special operation. Okay? Yeah. All right, so let's stop right here, take a break.